Time to pull up a chair and talk some Dynasty football. I am your host, J.J. Wenner, and this is the Rider Dynasty podcast. Tonight, we tackle the top running back prospect prospects in the NFL draft. Joining me is my co-host, the brains behind this operation, and you can find him on Twitter at JoeLow63. Joseph Harlow, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing swell. How are you, J.J.? And James. Fantastic. Fantastic. And of course, next up, he did such a good job last week. We brought him back. You can find him on Twitter at Jameson Rules with a Z. Jameson Hutchinson, how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. Uh, celebrating some March Madness today, but took a little bit of time to hang out with you guys, and I'm really excited to get into some of these prospects again. I appreciate you all having me back. Uh, must say I did something right if I'm back for a second time, so I appreciate it. Well, we are definitely excited to have you. And we're also excited because our comprehensive one-of-a-kind 2024 IDP Plus Rookie Guide is here. Get the IDP Plus Rookie Draft Guide right now for $9.99 for a limited time and get updates every Friday as the NFL Draft draws near. Check out the link in the show description and download your copy today. Gentlemen, they can download their copy or they can listen till after the show and they're going to get some information right now because we're going to hit these running back prospects in the rough order of Joe's rankings. And who better to start us off but Joe with Jonathan Brooks. Yes, this is my pretty clear running back one, except for that he tore his ACL late in the season. So that kind of puts a damper on that. Had he not been injured, it would have been Brooks in a tier of his own, and he would have a borderline true first-round grade for me. And little background there, I have less than 25 actual first-round grades amongst all players right now. I think NFL teams typically go on 15 to 17. So he would have been a borderline one of those. But the injury combined with his one-year starting, thanks, Bijan and Roshan. But yeah, so he's a very explosive runner. One, I think he's a huge amount of fun. Again, we only have, I didn't actually write down the number of carries we had for him in his career, but I think 170 ish carries total in his career this season. But if you look on the graphic here, if you're following along YouTube, stats courtesy of Pro Football Focus, uh, yards per attempt, six per carry, a little over. And then we have a YCO over A, which is yards per con, yards after contacted per attempt. So this is after he's hit yards, he's getting each carry almost four. And this year he forced 63 missed tackles and then also was a threat as in the receiving game, 25 receptions, almost 300 yards, um, 10 rushing touchdowns. Honestly, it was a really, really phenomenal year. This Texas offense was absolutely loaded. And you could tell that once he did go down, it was a little more challenging for them even with having the two potential first round wide receivers, a tight end who we'll talk about next week. And then a quarterback who's in contention for first round in 2025. But when Brooks went down, it really, their backup running back was solid, but you could tell they did not have quite the same just general juice. Brooks, I think good combination of size, speed, really just kind of everything. He reminds me a lot of Aaron Jones, but I think he's a little bigger and a little more athletic, especially as prospects, really more of what Aaron Jones was maybe three years ago, except he's Brooks is 21, 22. He will be 21 at the start of training camp. So he's only 20 right now. Okay. Um, yeah. I think he has is one of the only guys in this class who could potentially be a bell cow back. Well, I like hearing the words bell cow, Jonathan and Brooks. Jamison, what do you think? Yeah, I tend to agree there. I've, this running back list is really murky, but I think most people can agree that Jonathan Brooks, if he hadn't torn his ACL, would have been the number one running back, probably maybe borderline late round one, maybe round two type of player. But I think the thing for me is just he's really patient. Um, checking out some of the football guys' rookie guide, uh, which you can get free over there. I'll give the free plug to him. Uh, they have a comp of Le'Veon Bell, and I think that really fits him because he's very patient, waiting for the hole to open, and then, you know, he can just kind of squeeze by through and then, you know, do his damage there. But uh, one thing I'm very interested in the draft, the Dallas Cowboys doctor 
did the surgery for Jonathan Brooks. And it seems like throughout this entire off season, those two have been linked. Tony Pollard went to Tennessee and you know, they're in need, obviously in need because Rico Dowdle is probably not handling the running back one role. He's probably more of an RB two. So I'm kind of interested to see if that link stays through the entire process there. But I like Jonathan Brooks. I think, uh, like Joe said, probably one of the only true bell cows in this draft as far as at least the top end guys. But uh, he's a great prospect and seems like everything will be okay for him once he gets healthy for the NFL. I like how he can do a little bit of everything. Uh, He's a good runner, good receiver, good blocker. Uh, where are we looking at drafting? If he's our number one RB, where is he going in rookies, rookie drafts? They uh, one QB rookie draft. In a is one going... yeah. In a one quarterback league, I'm honestly willing to take him. Of course, it depends on draft capital. Assuming he does go in the second round, I'm willing to take him as early as fifth or fifth. I think which might be a bit high, but after the top three wide receivers and the top tight end, I think that's where he's at least starting to be in consideration. Would you agree, Jameson? Maybe a little bit later, like maybe end of the first round. I think it also depends if you're really needing a running back and you believe that he can kind of fit right in. I think if you're drafting after the NFL draft and you find out where he goes, that obviously makes life a lot easier for you. But I think he's at least a late round there's a lot of good wide receivers and you know, the way the fantasy football landscape is starting to really lean into the wide receivers. I'd rather take them over Brooks personally, especially with the injury, but I can say late round with confidence, I think, especially if you need one. Yeah. And I totally Fair agree. Enough. I would personally take an Adonai Mitchell over him, his teammate, but I do think five is when you can start having the conversation at least. Okay. Good information. Joe up next yes. is. Trey Benson. Yes, so here we have a very explosive running back. Shades of Kenneth Walker here, which if we remember him as a prospect. Smaller back, which Benson isn't, at least height-wise. And just explosive game-wrecking speed, but kind of hit or miss very much. Touchdown or loss of four yards. Benson has a lot of that in his game. Um, we saw a lot of regression this year in his g- generic numbers or more advanced numbers, excuse me, his yards after contact dropped almost a, or dropped a full yard and forced 35 less tackles this past year than 2022. I think a lot of that he did miss some time or whether it was off the field or once their quarterback went down or just having more talent on the team. There were less counting stats in general, but it is still worth noting. He did show more as a receiver this year. I don't think he's nearly as good as Jonathan Brooks as a receiver, but do think he has some value there, maybe a little more than a Kenneth Walker does. Um, do think he is the other back who does have some bell cow ability, though I would put it less likely. He does also have a knee injury in his past, which has caused some medicals, medical concerns from the combine and such. But if you see, he, as you can see here with the 439 speed, great athlete. His relative athletic score was 9.81 which love to see that. So I think he's very good and there's a good chance he's the first running back taken because he does not currently have the knee injury like Brooks. Very good. Trey Benson. What do you think, Jameson? Yeah. The knee injury that you bring up is kind of tricky because it was not a clean one. He tore his ACL, MCL, meniscus and hamstring. So when you talk about him, yeah, I mean, he did, he got all of them pretty good. Uh, We talk about Tajay Spears. A lot of people just wonder when, you know, the knees will kind of give because he's got something kind of similar there too. Um, But as far as production goes, he's a very balanced runner. And throughout college, he didn't turn the ball over. I don't think he ever had one fumble in the NFL. He's really good as a pass catcher, but pass blocking needs a lot of improvement. And that's where you get into three down territory. If you need a running back that can block, he's not really going to do that, at least right now. So you kind of worry about the availability as a true three down back. But um, the one thing that stuck out with me is they played LSU the very first game of the year. And I know it's early and at the end of the year, they lost their quarterback. So things were a little dicey, but he didn't impress me too much that game. And LSU ended up having one of the worst run defenses in the entire college football landscape. But I know he got better throughout the season. It seemed like compared to that game, I'm kind of iffy on him. I don't 
love him as seems like some other people are kind of hit and miss, but um, I do think he's got potential as far as the NFL level goes, um, especially for the running back that doesn't turn the fumble, like turn the ball over. Cause some of these running backs we're going to get into have some fumble issues. And I think that actually means a lot at the NFL level. Joe, if, if you're wrong on Benson, what's going to be the reason? Um, I think it's just going to be a lot of trying to get hit home runs every single time, not taking singles, doubles, and really just fading out because doesn't have great vision at times and that'll sink him if anything. Yeah. One thing with uh, Benson here, he's got 54 uh, runs at 10 plus yards. So when you talk about the Kenneth Walker home run or bust, we saw, we saw that with Seattle. Uh, like Joe said, he gets tackled for four yard loss or he's taken one to the house. It's like one or the other. It's very hot and cold. Another thing with him is he does run with reckless abandon where it's times similar to Jaden Daniels, quarterback from LSU. It's like, just kind of chill out. Sometimes you don't need to truck three dudes on one play. You can go down. It's okay. (laughs) Although we do like watching that. We do. (laughs) All right. Well, uh, let's finishing off Joe's top tier. Uh, Next up is Jalen Wright from Tennessee. Jameson. So Jalen Wright's kind of fun. I know. I think Joe likes him a whole lot. Um, I do. From what I can tell. If you want to start it off, I'll let you have at it, and then I'll kind of follow you there. Sure. Switch it up. Um, yeah, he's a very fun prospect. He's one who was not who was very big on my radar going into the year, then just kind of faded off as uh, Jonathan Brooks and Trey Benson broke out a lot, and then came back on the scene, or more I started watching him. And you can see if you're watching on YouTube, yards per attempt between the last two years jumped up a full yard and a half from six to 7.4 and yards contact average yards after contact. It's a mouthful to say jumped over half a yard. So, and also more missed tackles and increased his receiving production 11 times. So 22 receptions. A lot of people have compared him to Alvin Kamara. I don't see that in terms of a receiver think that's the Tennessee helmet kind of helps there with the dreads but I do see it as a runner a little bit I do think he's more explosive more of like a Raheem Mostert or like a bigger and badder Jerome Ford who's someone who I was really high on so that is a compliment to me and I thought he was good with Cleveland in stretches this year but over the last two years he has 55 runs of over 10 yards of 10 plus yards similar to Trey Benson and 14 touchdowns over the last two seasons as well I think he's a very good back. I don't think he's one who's going to step in and be the number one right away. But if even Houston still took him to pair him with Joe Mixon for a year and then he takes over, I think it is very doable. Yeah, especially for, like you said, he's, his explosive run rate of 10 plus yards, he did that on 25% of his carries. So, I mean, he's Crazy. really kind of wild when you think of one fourth of his entire, you know, repertoire is basically home run balls, but he needs a little bit of development as a pass or a pure runner and kind of improve his vision and stuff. But I've seen a lot of the Alvin Kamara comps and I I wouldn't compare him exactly to that because I think Alvin Kamara is a totally different specimen. But at the combine, he did rank second overall in running back testing. Thought it was really important for his... You know, we saw some Kentucky Irvin didn't do near as hot, and he's kind of compared up there too with Jalen Wright. So, but I like Jalen Wright. I think he's going to contribute at the NFL level. As far as fantasy wise, I think he's one of the guys I would target later compared to some of the other running backs we'll get into. But I think he's a fun prospect, definitely. Now, Joe, uh, this is the end, right? These these top three are in your top tier. How big of a gap is it between Jalen Wright and the fourth receiver? Um, so fourth running back, sorry. All good. I think it is a pretty decent gap looking at my just pure grades. I have all of Jalen Wright, Trey Benson and Jonathan Brooks with the top 50 overall grade. And then my fourth running back, they're all closer to mid third round picks. So it's about a round difference for NFL drafts. And then that is a big tier of how many names we have there. Seven guys. I think we're going to talk about who are just kind of mushed together. Okay. So I do think this is, it's a noticeable gap. All right. Well, let's start with uh, the next guy in that tier. Uh, Marshawn Lloyd. Jameson. Yep. 
Uh, coming out of USC, 5'9", 220. Uh, ran a 4.46 40-yard dash at the Combine. And then last year with uh, Caleb Williams at the quarterback and Cliff Kingsbury as the offensive coordinator, he had 820 yards and nine touchdowns and 13 receptions for 232 yards. So pretty decent profile there uh, for what he did last year. Before then, he played at South Carolina, uh, but he did tear his ACL in 2020. So that would be on the radar for some NFL teams, but he seems to come back pretty good from it. Um, very good in open space, and I think he's very versatile. Um, last year, I know he spent a lot of time blocking for Caleb Williams. It's not a stat that necessarily comes up on the you know, chart there, but as far as translating over to the NFL, he definitely can be capable, more of a three-down back, just because he can be on the field to pass block for his quarterback. But he's got a lot of burst. Um, he's very good laterally, and I think he's one of the prospects on the lower tier that actually has some juice to him. We're going to get into some of these guys who are just thumpers. Uh, he's actually got some juice, can actually hit the home run ball, so to speak. But I think he's a fun prospect. The one downside to him is he has had ball security issues his entire career. And once you get in the NFL, like we talked about earlier, you can't have that. You don't end up on the field. So that's the one big red flag. And he's a little undersized at 5'8", but um, one of the better backs in this kind of mid-tier range and if he can clean up the ball security i think he will be able to contribute at the nfl level joe marshawn lloyd yeah i like lloyd a lot this is one where he is fourth on my list for fantasy due to what jameson said that he has more juice than anyone else in this tier um i actually have him more like six or seven for my overall running backs for nfl projections but Again, for fantasy, I do think he is one who has the pass catching and pass blocking ability. He might be the best pass pro back in this class, at least of the upper level guys, which I did not expect going into the film. But yeah, I mean, he definitely exploded with uh, what's his name, Lincoln Riley and Caleb Williams this year. Almost said Cliff Kingsbury. Don't want to credit him, but <laughs> um, I'm right there with you. Yeah, I think my comp for him is DeAndre Swift, which. Swift is a frustrating player, but if you're going in expecting a bit of a frustrating player, I think it's very different than when we went in expecting DeAndre Swift to be the next great running back. So I think if you if you were expecting what DeAndre Swift is, just a solid RB2, I think you could get him in late second, early third of your rookie drafts. I think that would be you'd be really happy with it. Whereas Swift was going what 105, even in super flex leagues, if not yeah. higher. I want to say one thing uh, just real quick about these running backs, something that I know we're in the middle of talking about them, but the difference between the fantasy portion of these running backs and real life NFL, it is so hit and miss. And I feel like that is hard to kind of come off during the, you know, talking about them because we're always in the fantasy mindset. And, you know, like I said, we're going to talk about some more of these guys and it just, it gets very goofy. I guess I'll just kind of put it that way. Yeah. Landing spots are going to matter so much. It's very yeah, much going to be one of those where I think the next name, if I have the names right, is one of my favorite backs in the class, but I don't know if he's going to do any do much for fantasy. So it really depends. Well, Joe, you teed it up. Uh, <laughs> a player who I always assume I'm either missaying his name or misspelling it, uh, Audric Estime. Yes, that's the pronunciation as far as I know as well. And... Yeah, he is quite the thumper. Big running back. He ran a very concerning 472 at the combine, but at his pro day, which was yesterday or today, got under 46. So, which that shows up more on film. Definitely expected the more 445 or 455, 458 sort of run. So, him getting that at the pro day makes him feel a little better. Don't know what happened at the combine, but I'm going to ignore it because I like this player. Which is that great process? Probably not, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> That's fine. At this time, with this class in particular, you kind of have to just go with who you like. He's a massive running back, 5'11", 221. Looks like he's 260 on film, but just bowling over people. Um, I would always watching Peyton Wilson film and just saw him hurdle two dudes on one play. I was like, oh, that's cool. Don't see that from a big running back very often. I um, think he's really good laterally. And as you, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see 26 catches over the last two seasons, 
solid numbers for a big back. Um, he is a power back. I do think he's a little more than an AJ Dillon. I think my confirm is a Chris Carson, which heard from like Dane Brugler and Daniel Jeremiah, which is like, that makes a lot of sense. And think he can be a pretty good NFL pro, at least for a couple of years. Yeah. I think, uh, with him, if the NFL version of Jerome Bettis in 2024, where he's like a little more, obviously much smaller, but underrated athleticism, and then the yards after contact. I mean, his contact balance at the in college was unbelievable. He's always going forward. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. And just the if we shrunk Jerome B- uh, Bettis a little bit, and he's not as, as athletic, excuse me, but that's kind of my weird comp for him. But and he's also a great pass blocker, and that really, when we talk about NFL getting on the field, I think he'll end up on the field just for that alone. He's probably one of, if not the best, pass blockers in this class. So um, he's a tough prospect because it's not pretty. Like we we're always looking for flash and you know glamour and all that stuff, but he does get it done. So I think he's a he's a fun prospect. It's just it's a little as far as fantasy wise, I'm kind of curious to see how it actually works for him yeah like are we just getting another aj dylan fantasy yeah. level player or that's that's just uh just the hard part of it yeah it's always the hard thing so where would you take him in a fantasy draft if we're agnostic of his landing space uh place at this time end of the second beginning of the third i was gonna say mid third maybe I, i'd be willing yeah. to take him in second and you're a big like, fan of his. Yeah, that's depends one quarterback for super flex, of course. Okay. But yeah, I think one quarterback. Uh, me personally, I think I could wait. I don't. Yeah. I wouldn't see myself going that high. But I was. I mean, everybody's got preferences. So you're pre- yeah. you're obviously more higher than I am. But I don't. I don't hate him or nothing. It just it's not it's not sexy. And I feel like I guess when I say I take him mid second, I'm not thinking about other names. There, who would be there in this wide receiver class? Maybe that does push him back, but fair enough. All right, gentlemen, let's uh move on to the next running back, Braylon Allen. Now, Braylon Allen, I find myself giddy over this running back, but I'm a little bit confounded by the promise of talent versus reality. Now, on the plus side. He has an amazing size, right? Six foot one, 235 pounds. This is the type of back that can ideally wear out the defense, salt the game away, right? Getting all the carries that you want down the stretch. He's young. He's going to play his entire rookie season, unless he goes to the Super Bowl uh, at the age of 20. That means he still can grow and develop. But Willie, right? It's always the question. Doesn't he still played a lot of college ball? Why do we just think because he's 20, he's going to keep getting better? I don't know. That's the question. But the negatives are also there for him. His passing game work is minimal, averaging 20 catches a year. His hands need some work. His blocking doesn't quite match his size, right? 6'1", 235. He should be able to handle almost any rusher that he's getting, right? But he kind of lacks in that area. He has fumble issues. Uh, It's not a huge number. But on 181 attempts, it might be a little bit troublesome at the next level. I'm not excited that he didn't run a 40 or agility drills at the combine or his pro day, uh, saying that, you know, he's still injured from the season and he's going to let his tape stand. I mean, I have watched him go in mock drafts somewhere in the late second, early third. But I think I'm going to let somebody else take him. I may regret it but I think I'm just going to be happier letting somebody else enjoy Braylon Allen than I think that worrisome mix of promise versus talent on my roster. Joe, where are you at with Braylon Allen? So to clarify, when you say you're seeing him late second, early third, is that for fantasy or NFL mocks? Mock draft, sorry. Uh, Fantasy mock. Okay. That makes more sense. Like late second, I don't think I've seen for Allen, at least not since the no. draft season started, but yeah, he was actually the first running back I did a full report on and I kind of hate 
how high I was on him. Lo looking back again, it's like, no, I don't really. Definitely toning it back a bit. I think just seeing someone that large move that fast and being that young. But yeah, the blocking really does concern me. It's very reminiscent of Tyler Algier, who is bigger back, but didn't do the big back stuff well, but also wasn't like a plus athlete enough to be right there. And then he fell in the perfect scheme, so it didn't matter. But I don't know. It's He's very like Garrett Blunt to me. It's the receiving work, and you see 28 catches last season, but for less than five yards of reception, it's like those are basically just other carries at that point. Yep. It's actually less significantly less average than his carries. But yeah, I do think if he's going, I would take Audric Estime over him despite these rankings. But if you told me you would take him over Estime, I get it. But I don't know. I'm just, I think I agree with you. Just let someone else take him and have fun or suffer through it. I'm with you. Listen, we're all sort of feeling that same way. And although we're not excited about that, we are thrilled to announce our new partnership with your one-stop shop for the best prices in the travel world, Expedia. So check out the link in the show description and head over to Expedia.com. Their spring sale can net you up to 25% off select hotels if you book by March 25th. And of course, they always find the best deals for you so you can just enjoy the ride. So check out the link in the show description and get your next adventure planned today. Well, gentlemen, speaking of the next adventure, uh, let's keep the ball rolling with our next running back, Jameson, Blake Corum. He's definitely a fan favorite to a lot of people. Uh, Blake Corum coming out of Michigan, 5'8", 205. He ran uh, 4.53, 40 at the combine. Did very well. Uh, statistically last year for Michigan national champs, uh, 1,245 yards on the ground for 27 touchdowns and then 16 receptions for 117 yards and one touchdown. Um, came, it was a little bit banged up last year. He is very good in short yardage. And as far as his career, like the more touchdowns he got was within five yards. So he's not really, you know, extending plays or hitting home run balls, but, um, as far as he is, he's just a grinder, and he does it on volume. It's not necessarily strength, um, especially being 5'8", 205. It's not like he's plowing guys or plowing them over, so to speak. But um, it's just the large workloads that he's got. And then he's a one-speed runner, so that kind of makes him, as far as short yardage, it makes him excel. He'd be great in the red zone for some teams. But as far as the NFL kind of translating over, I think he fits more in a RB2 role. I don't see him as at overall RB1. And I see everybody talking about him going to the Chargers. They already got Gus Edwards this offseason. I don't really see the need to get Blake Quorum there too. But he's got good vision, and he's also known as a great teammate. Everybody at Michigan loved him. But it's just really hard to see the actual upside in Blake Quorum, especially um, as an RB1 volume workload, that sort of thing. I think he can get touchdowns, and I think that's definitely valuable. But as far as a top 10 fantasy asset. I don't see that with Blake Gorham. Yeah, I was a bit torn uh, on Blake until I saw the football guy's player comp of the muscle hamster himself, Doug Martin. Uh, yep. <laughs> God, I love Doug Martin. And, you know, if Blake Gorham could end up putting together a stretch of great, like Doug Martin had, that little stretch of amazing, that'd be a great outcome for him, huh, Joe? It would be. It really would be. I just worry. Yeah, I don't think there's much longevity there, even if he does end up going to a great spot. He had almost 700 carries in college. That's a lot of wear and tear, especially on a smaller back, smaller power back. And you can see here that even though the touchdowns went up, that his yards per attempt went down in 2021, 6.6 .6 to 5.9 to 4.8. And all of his, his contact, his yards after contact per carry went down half a yard from 21 to 22, then a full yard from 22 to 23. And yeah, he was dealing with injury, but he was dealing with injury while still taking on a huge workload. I think he's a very good football player. I just don't know how much he's one of those who I just don't know how much is going to translate to fantasy aside from being a touchdown vulture. It's a shame. It doesn't <laughs> always pan out for these guys. I hope he gets drafted and I hope he finds a role, but we'll see actually what happens when the draft comes. 
Uh, gentlemen, now you two were going back and forth on this next running back out of Oregon. So I'm going to let you two fight over Bucky Irving. Joe, I'll let you start off. So you can you can have yeah. your fun and then I'll have mine. Sounds good. So this is a very interesting, weird player. Um, 5'9", 192, small back, seems like the scat back sort of type, except he ran a 4.56 and had a really gross combine. His relative athletic store score was, uh, what was it? Let me see here, 3.72. This is 0 to 10. So that's, that's, that's not great. However, he is a back who this honestly wasn't too surprising to me. Watching him on film, this it wasn't really a surprise. Like he wasn't overly lightning fast, explosive. The combination of all the numbers and seeing it together was jarring for sure. But he's very Kyron Williams, who Kyron Williams had, I think, like a 3-8 or a 3-6 as his relative athletic score. So, And we know how he turned out this year. I think Irving's a similar player. Now, the thing that Kyron had that he doesn't is Kyron was an elite pass blocker. He was a top five pass blocking running back his first day in the league. Irving isn't that. So that's going to cap his upside a lot and ability to stay on the field. But he had 85 receptions from Bo Nix over the past two years. Granted, his average depth of target this season was almost negative two. So wasn't doing much downfield, but that's still having it's still a lot of work, a lot of production. A lot of it on film high yards per attempt good he was really good at breaking tackles uh getting four yards an extra four yards after contact per carry uh forced seven almost 70 missed tackles each of the last two years while nice. at oregon and yeah it's a gadgety offense <laughs> very nice but i do think he's a good player it just depends if he does he lands somewhere and get the show that kyron williams did yeah especially kyron was one of the as far as combine or, you know, draft profiles, one of the worst coming out. And, you know, he completely flipped the script there. But Bucky Irvin, yeah. he's very, it's very hit and miss. You know, we talk about Bo Nix, and I think the reason why NFL teams are having trouble with him is just how many times he threw the ball for screen passes or behind the line of scrimmage. And obviously Bucky Irvin uh, handled most of that stuff. He is actually pretty strong for his size, and he will run through contact. Um, and he's got a good vision and good burst, but a lot of the stuff, 24th overall in the combine athleticism uh, charts there, which is not great, especially for one of these smaller backs. And we're getting to this weird thing. I saw somebody compare him to Devon Achan the other day on Twitter, and that was the worst thing. I, yeah. we've, we're getting to the, pro, the point where we just look at somebody's size and think, you know, oh, they catch passes out of the backfield we can slot them in there it's two totally different yeah. things and no. it just it's very it's very frustrating i feel like people will look at bucky's profile and see the production and like oh we can fit him in him like that or jameer gibbs i know jameer gibbs is a little bit bigger but um it's just not that at all but um he doesn't have the long speed for his size you think somebody is shorter back and like the smaller stature you think his deal would be speed but it really isn't that either so it just it's a very complex profile for Bucky and I have a hard time with him but as far as fantasy goes I think if you're going to take a late round dart throw I think he could be one that kind of pays off for people in fantasy how late of a dart throw say third or fourth round I'd say same as uh, Blake Corm. they're two totally different backs but I think they can similar get there in different ways, but end up kind of the same fantasy value. You know, he'd be more of a PPR guy. Uh, Blake Horn would be a touchdown vulture type of thing. But he's just, Bucky's a very confusing prospect in all different ways and shapes. It's just, I I really don't know what to do with him. I don't hate him, don't love him. There's some red flags there, but there's also some really nice stuff about him. So it's just kind of give and take. Landing spot's going to be huge. All right. Well, let's uh, cleanse the palate from this confusing running back and go to uh, the woods up in New Hampshire with Dylan Lowby. Yeah. Uh, older prospect. I think he'll turn 25 going into his rookie season. 
less than ideal, especially for someone coming from a FC or is New Hampshire FCS or D2? I think they're FCS, right? I believe so. Yeah. Either way, from yeah, he, that's F FCS. Thank you. But he is prototypical scat back, just receiving back in the James White, Rex Burkhead, uh, Danny Woodhead. All those are a little on the nose, but he's in that mold. Um, James White, I think, is the one he compares more to, but really, you know what he is. He's a receiving back. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see the stats that we have up here, courtesy PFF again. And over the past three seasons, when he was the lead back, he has, quick math, 138 catches for just for 1,400 yards, which and though isn't just on swing routes like Bucky Irving was getting screens, but he was running legit wide receiver routes. At the Senior Bowl, he was running outside wide receiver routes and was torching DBs. I know I wrote an article, a combine wrap-up article, and there was a clip in there or sorry, a senior bowl wrap-up article. There was a clip in there of him toasting one of the top corners on a deep route. And that sort of stuff he can do. Fantasy-wise, if you're not in a full PPR league, I would ignore him just because he's also probably going to be a fifth-round pick because he doesn't have – he's not a really a running back. He doesn't have in-between-the-tackles sort of skill set. He likes to bounce outside a lot. Does have some injury concerns. You can, If you're watching on YouTube, you can see the numbers dropped a lot this year. That's he was fighting through injury most of the season which is a concern for a smaller scat back, but PPR upside through the roof, I think. What do you think, Jameson? Or I think the comparison would be Danny Woodhead, but Danny Woodhead at least was able to run in between the tackles a little bit, and I don't mean to yeah. dump on him, but, I mean, he's not running back at all. I mean, it's clearly just receiving work. You hope that he lands somewhere on special teams, and that would be his way to kind of make it on the NFL squad, but it's really hard. He'd be a PPR guy if that, but I mean, I he wouldn't be on my radar personally. I don't, I, I really have a hard time seeing him translating to the NFL level because he's not, he's just a receiving back. He'd almost benefit from being a wide receiver more than an actual running back. I agree. It's weird. His vision when actually running is pretty poor, but if you put him out, out wide and like setting up blocks while he has the ball in his hand, it is incredible. It's like, it's a weird disconnect there. And he's not fast either. That's another uh, part of him. It just there's nothing special outside the receiving stuff with him. All right. Well, speaking of somebody special, Jameson, let's uh, take a look at the next running back, Isaac Gorendo. This is one of my favorite late round dart throws, and I've been taking him a little bit, uh, especially late in drafts and mock drafts, just because. I don't think a lot of people have eyes on him. Isaac Grendo from Louisville, uh, six foot, two hundred and twenty-one pounds. He ran a four point three three forty yard dash, which was uh, the best in the combine. His athletic score was number one overall at the combine for all running backs. Um, he spent a lot of time at Wisconsin, four years, uh, where and then he finally got the lead back role at Louisville. He was also a track star athlete in high school. Um, as far as the actual tape goes, he doesn't look near as athletic but it really as far as the stats and stuff goes i mean he he passed every metric he's a three down back in my eyes he comes from the same wisconsin running back tree kind of like jonathan taylor or melvin gordon where you know they're big backs but they have size uh they have speed they got home run ball ability um when he played louisville last year uh he played with jahar jordan and he was the thunder portion where Jordan was kind of the lightning, if that makes sense. But um, I like him a lot. I think he's one of these late round dart throws who can actually be a three down back at the NFL. And I think that he could end up in a Michael Turner type role where he ends up being an RB2 and say an injury happens or LT gets signed to the Jets. He kind of slots right in and ends up with a workload. As far as modern day, um, trying to think who was behind Tyler Algier who's who I was thinking of would be a similar kind of you know spot I would think Isaac Rendo could end up falling in if that makes sense somebody who's not going to necessarily be flashy um but he could fall into an RB1 role and produce have a thousand yard season that sort of thing funny my keeping with the Falcon theme of Michael Turner and Tyler Algier my come from is Tevin Coleman also of Falcons fame <laughs> I think he had the high running style, but great athlete, but doesn't always show up on film. And 
I don't know. My thing with him is I don't feel like he breaks tackles like at all. He just kind of gets from point A to point B and that's it. Uh, I definitely think Jamar Jordan it, or that Garendo is a better prospect than Jordan is. He's not someone we're really going to mention aside from here, but Jordan was the lead back there just having had been there for a couple of years. But, I don't know. I definitely see the three down the three down ability. I just don't know how high I am on him comparatively, but if you are going to take a dart throw late, especially if he does end up, he'll probably end up sneaking into early day three of NFL draft just with that combine performance. So if you're going to take a shot on someone, might as well take it on the crazy athlete, right? Absolutely. Especially like a four, three, three. And it's not like he's a five, eight, 170 pound running back, six foot two twenty. Yeah. It's a big back. Yeah. And just like I said, uh, Wisconsin, it seems like every running back of theirs is like Jonathan Brooks, all these guys, they all come from the same cloth. They're big guys who've got some speed that doesn't necessarily think about it as speedsters, but once they end up on the field, like Jonathan Taylor can make one cut and take it to the house. I mean, uh, Grendo had a couple of those runs at Louisville last year. It doesn't always show up, and it's kind of weird because he's such a late-round prospect, but, I mean, he tests so well. But it just it's not always there on film. But uh, he's somebody, especially running backs, I'm always just trying to throw dart throws late and hope one of them hits instead of paying up for one. Um, and this is the one guy I've got my eye on. And I've been taken really across the board. It's almost like free stuff. But just take it while you can. Absolutely. Especially like last year's Izzy Ab- Abanaconda. Who, he's great a athlete. Guy. <laughs> Very. But... <laughs> But great athlete, but he went to a not ideal spot. But honestly, that just made him go later. And I think he's a great pickup. And Grendo could be a similar mold. Just if Brees Hall goes down, you have a great athlete behind him. And this could be a very similar. Not wishing that upon you, JJ, of course. But Easy, Joe. <laughs> Easy but you right know, there. You know buddy. what I mean, though. You having oh, a great I'm athlete picking up what you're putting athlete. down. Yeah. But we don't need to see Izzy. No. I'm good. All right, gentlemen. Uh, next up is somebody who, man, I, I have to say, whenever I hear his name, my mind goes back because I'm old, unlike you two. Uh, I think <laughs> of Stuart Scott always saying, Pookie and my cousin Ray Ray. Like, <laughs> it just takes me back to the classic uh, sports centers of my youth. Now, and not only that, but when you see a picture of, uh, Ray Davis, he looks like Jerome Bettis. Now, it was weird that you, Javis, and you were talking about Bettis a little bit earlier because something about Ray Davis, like maybe it's just his size, um, you know, not height, but he's like a solidly built back and his quick feet. I don't know, really interesting to me. He weighed in at 211 at the combine, but I think he lost weight so he could run a 4 5 3. 211 was not his playing weight. Um, but what I love the most about him is his ability to hit the hole between the tackles and run over players. He, he does have outside run ability, but his strength is to get the yards that are blocked ahead of him. Like he's going to hit the hole and get what you need. Uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that in the NFL. Like that is sometimes good for fantasy uh, because he's constantly going to gain yards, right? Right. We talked earlier about guys just going for home runs. He's not a home run hitter. He's just going to get you singles and doubles, singles and doubles. And I might take that um, because, I mean, where he's lacking is that top end speed. It's going to limit his upside, but his receiving production saw an uptick, right? He averaged 9.8 yards a catch, you know, up on the screen. You can see if you're watching on YouTube, 32 for 324. He also scored seven receiving touchdowns. And I may be crazy, and I I know I am. My students would say I am. But I think I would rather have Ray than Garendo, Lauby, Quorum, or probably Estime. Sorry, Joe. Um, I don't think you're Sorry, Joe. I'm almost like the FB uh, football guys. They always say sorry, Joe, but for a different reason. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Jameson, am I alone on my Ray Ray love? I think he's got a spot. I don't. Love him. He doesn't have upside, but the problem is we're always looking for upside and nothing else, especially in the fantasy landscape. And, you know, sometimes if you just sit and let some guys that don't, you know, 
you get him at a better price, I think Ray Davis would be one of these. Uh, kind of a weird note. If you look at him, he kind of looks like Randall Cobb, and he also came from Kentucky. That was the first thing that stuck out. It's not a stat or anything like that, but it's just kind of weird. But um, he's just a grinder. He's actually improved a lot. He's an older prospect, though. He's coming out. He he's 24 right now. But He went to three as, different colleges, right? He bounced around. Yeah, and he, and he played in a bunch of different systems, too. So yep. he can do a lot. He's pretty versatile. He's just an in-between uh, running back. Like, in-between the tackles, there's nothing – too uh sexy about him but i definitely think he can contribute all right jameson anything to add i mean joseph sorry no worries <laughs> um yeah just nothing really new to add there i like davis a lot i think he's going to be a very good pro very mike davis like could be in a role too and hopefully he just gets a shot with so many of these guys i think they're good football players or at least talented football players and they just need a spot Landing spots can be so important for these guys, more so than most classes, I feel like. Yep. All right, gentlemen. Well, we have hit the point where we get the best of the rest. Now, I want you to give me your best 10-word description of the following backs. Jameson, you are up first with Tyrone Tracy. So, older athletic prospect who can be a flashy, rhythmic runner. That's what I had for him. I like rhythmic runners. Joe, what do you think? I'm not sticking 10 words on this one. I wish I had seen Sir Tracy earlier because he would have skyrocketed on mine. He is an older prospect. That's He started as a wide receiver. This was his only year as a true running back. And I thought his film is phenomenal. A really good kick returner. Very fast. I think he had top three combine performance amongst running backs. 4-4-8. Four, four, looks faster than that. I think for day three running back, I think he's going to be the one I'm going to be going after. I think he is phenomenal and has a great receiving upside. Yeah, he gets cute and tries to bounce outside a lot, but being 24 doesn't bother me considering he doesn't have much wear on the tread on the tires and is still learning the position. Yeah, he's a converted wide receiver, man. I love him. I love him. Yeah. Uh, Joe, Will Shipley. Um, Athletic white boy? <laughs> I think there's more to him than that, but I really struggled with him throughout, but I think there's talent there. All right, Jameson, Will Shipley. A versatile runner and receiver who lacks long speed. Fair enough. Cody Schrader, Jameson. Spent six years in college as a volume back. He's not not one of my favorites. Six years Joe? in college is a very long time. Hey, some of us needed all <laughs> six years. Joseph. Subpar athlete with great production. Will he will himself to a role? Yeah. All right. J uh, Joe, Isaiah Davis. Uh, hammer of a FCS running back. Some talent. <laughs> Ish. Jameson. So physical thumper who lacks speed and decisiveness. All right. Now, Jameson, I added this guy for you. Keelan Robinson. It's a very undersized running back, but he's a good kick returner. So pay attention to your settings, your scoring. If you get kick return yards, Joe. <laughs> Elite returner, touchdown every four offensive touches. So if, if I'm doing fantasy Twitter right, if I extrapolate that and give him 20 touches a game, he would have he would average five touchdowns a game. Exactly. Just like Tony Pollard. This is awesome. <laughs> Fantasy is easy, people. Yeah. Uh Robinson's anybody we someone missed? I do like, but I just want to oh. he is just a if you have return points similar yeah. to Anthony Gould from the receivers, this is just keep an eye on him. Keelan. Yeah. Anybody we missed? <sighs> There's some other names out there. I'm just there's a lot of names. I don't think there's anyone really worth that's going to have fantasy chops. Double checking my board, though. Do you th is there anyone jumping out to you, Jace or Jameson? Uh, not really. I think Frank Gore Jr.'s name will pop up a little bit, but he is not yeah. like his father. So it's a lot of – it's such a weird class, and it's already been hammered that it's not the best running back class. And I don't think it's bad so to speak. I mean, we don't have the top end guys. The problem is we got a lot of thumpers, 
and where all we care about is fantasy, like we talked about earlier. Thumpers really don't get it going as far as fantasy goes, unless you're falling into the end zone. And that's been a lot of the problem, I think, for a lot of people who are either trying to rank them or kind of put them in their own you know, tiers and stuff. Even tiering a lot of these guys is hard. hard because it's all landing spot. It's really where it's going to end up, and that's the hard part of it. Yeah. I guess the last couple names to just bring up are some smaller school guys. Rasheen Ali from Marshall, who had – did he tear his biceps at the Senior Bowl or something that he was injured, which was a shame. Uh, Kamani Vidal from Troy, and then Jaden Sheridan from Monmouth are the other ones, just a late, probably later day three picks who might turn into something. They have some love. Throw them on your radar, and let's see the landing spots or where they go as UDFAs. Uh, mm -hmm. Now – I know if you're watching on YouTube, you might be looking at us and thinking it's a model like show right now, but we're not just pretty faces here at IDP plus we have an entire suite of tools and rankings for both offense and defense plus rookie rankings, injury trackers, snap tools, premium articles, and more right now. Get your first month for just $1 with the promo code mock draft head over to idpguys.org after the show and get ahead of your lazy league mates and start your march towards fantasy football greatness today with the promo code mock draft the link and details are in the show description gentlemen it is time for tags where we share any final thoughts and let everyone know where they can find us jameson well, I'm on the Twitter machine at Jameson Rules. Um, be doing all this rookie stuff. We got the NFL draft coming up here in a couple of weeks. I'm really excited about that. Got a bunch of my bets placed already. But uh, other than that, we'll be doing mock drafts. I'll be around answering questions, doing all that good stuff. And uh, like I said, just appreciate you guys having me on. It's been a lot of fun today. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Joe, you're up. Yeah, and just want to echo, thank you for joining us again, Jameson. It has ruled. <laughs> um you can find me on twitter at jolo 63 says right oh, oh there the screen thing is difficult um you can find my work at idp plus i will be doing another couple mock drafts just some free agency roundups some other things and also just want to say thank you to the amazing jj winner for being a great host and oh, also you. to my good pal justin fry at oh he just changed his again, and I forgot to write down what it is. But Justin Fry, who I do the mailbag show with every Tuesday at 2 Eastern, jump in, ask us questions, which you can email to mailbag at IDP guy, or IDP plus dot org. Also, just switch that. And yeah, jump in live. Watch us later. We'll answer any question. Fantastic. Now, let's see if I'm better at the pointing. I'm at JJ Winner on Twitter. <laughs> Thank you to Joe and Jameson for all of their hard work on this episode. I make them do all the hard work and I just sit here and host. Uh, thank you to IDP family for all their support. Special thanks as always, Gary and Foxworth for helping produce the pod. They post it. They make the thumbnails. They do all the hard work and just let us be idiots on, on screen. So from all of us to all of you, be safe, be well. And remember, never say anything to make a meeting longer or cut a happy hour short. Boat drinks, my friends. Boat drinks.